Hi, BookTube. It's Gina, and I'm here today to talk about cozy books, my favorite. I had a commenter on a prior video say that they wanted to get started with cozy books, but they weren't quite sure where to start. And what a great idea for a video. So I'm going to talk today about my five favorite cozy authors and where I think you should start if you're interested in reading cozy books. Now, these are all five authors that have a lot of books to choose from. So I have lots of other favorite cozy books, but there are more like one-offs. So I picked these five because they have a lot of, of books to choose from. So let's get started. Um, number five, and these are not in any particular order because I love all five of these authors a lot. Number five is Agatha Christie. And I have got a huge paperback Agatha Christie collection. I just grabbed a few to show you here. I've got a, a whole shelf that is just full of these paperbacks. But surprisingly enough, the two that I'm going to actually recommend, I don't own, so I can't show them to you. But I have a lot of others. And that just makes me realize that I need to continue working on my Agatha Christie collection. So Agatha Christie, I'm sure you all, of course, know who she is. She had two main series, one starring Miss Marple, the little old lady in the village who solves mysteries by remembering past little village incidents. She's a little snarkier than you think at first. And Hercule Poirot, the little Belgian French man with a, a little twisty mustache. And he's very particular, very intelligent, and he solves mysteries Generally, he's not set in an English village, but he moves around a little bit. So for Agatha Christie, I would recommend starting at those two characters' first books. Number one being The Murderous Affair at Styles, which is the first Poirot book. And then The Murder at the Vicarage, which is the first Miss Marple books. These are wonderful stories just wonderful delicious details very they're very old-fashioned now but this golden age of mysteries are just wonderful plotty story driven tales very satisfying endings easy to read very cozy they don't generally have as much in the way of domestic details. So one of the things I love so much about cozies is domestic details. And these first two don't have as many of that as the last um, ones do, which I'll talk about when I get to that. Um, my second, I've got this beautiful box set. This is Barbara Pym, who uh, there's definitely a theme to this. I think all of these authors are UK based, um, which is, is not a prerequisite, but I definitely find I, I tend toward that. Um, Barbara Pym. So she was writing later than Agatha Christie. And I think this set was, was published in 1981. Um, that was the tail end of her, of her career. Um, Barbara Pym is wonderful because she is a little bit more, mm, She's not like Jane Austen at all, but her writing style is a little bit less just immediately what you would think of as cozy. It's a little Jane Austen-esque. She's got a little bit of a attitude towards her subjects. This book is very funny um, in a, I would say in a very British sort of way. And so it's not necessarily the, the, the easy cozies. They're definitely still easy, short, very fun, very fun to read. But she takes a, a little bit more of a cynical eye with her characters, which I just think is fantastic. And these are wonderful, easy to read. Um, so this is Jane and Prudence. This is where I would start with Barbara Pym. 
all of her books are, are wonderful. All the ones I've read. I have not read them all, which just makes me so happy because I know that I've got more to look forward to. Um, but this is, is Jane who married a vicar and then Prudence, her, her young friend comes to visit and a little chaos ensues. But this, this sentence I love, this is uh, Jane thinking um, uh, back when she was first married. So it says, when she and Nicholas were engaged, Jane had taken great pleasure in imagining herself as a clergyman's wife, starting with Trollope and working through the Victorian novelists to the present day gallant, cheerful wives who ran large houses and families on far too little money and sometimes wrote articles about it in the Church Times. <laughs> and I just think that is so, so funny and um, just very witty. Uh, she's got a little, a, a little bit of attitude, which I really enjoy. So Barbara Pym is one of my, one of my all-time favorite authors. All five of these authors are, these are five of my all-time favorites. And this box set, I think it's, it, it looks like these books have not even ever been read. Isn't that just beautiful? Um, the other two books here are Less Than Angels and A Glass of Blessings, which I don't think I've read Less Than Angels yet. So another one that I get to, I get to always have something to look forward to. Um, next, I am going to go with D.E. Stevenson. Now, D.E. Stevenson wrote a lot of books, and these are some examples of her, of her vintage, um, some of the vintage hardbacks that I have found. Um, this is Celia's House, which is a, sort of a family saga set in a house that generations live in, and we, we meet the generations. Um, this is Shoulder in the Sky. Um, where I would start with D.E. Stevens and is any of her books, really. You could pick any of them up and they're going to be wonderful. They are getting reissued some of them in this. Um, this is Source Books Landmark Editions. I've started to see some of these. I've actually also got um, this Listening Valley one. This is, this is good, too. Um, but I'm always keeping my eye open for these vintage, vintage hardbacks. Um, but this is um, this is Miss Bunkle Married. I'm going to recommend for the first D.E. Stevenson to start with the first. This is sort of a series. Um, the first book in this is called Miss Bunkle's Book, and it is so funny. Miss Bunkle is a hoot. She lives in a small town. And she's a little strapped for money, so she decides she's going to write a book. And she's not very creative in her own mind, so the way that she writes her book is to tell the stories of all of her village neighbors, which um, she hopes won't get her into trouble because she doesn't, she writes it under a pen name, and it's just hilarious. So Miss Bunkle's book and then Miss Bunkle Married would be where I would start with D.E. Stevenson. But any of her books are going to be fantastic. So you can't go wrong with any D.E. Stevenson for cozies. Um, next, I'm going to go with, these two will not be any, just any surprise to anybody who's watched my channel at all. I'm going to go with Rosamond Pilcher. Um, and I'm going to recommend starting out this time of year with Winter Solstice. This is a really wonderful, cozy book about a, a, a woman in her later years. And I just love stories about women, old ladies, old lady protagonists, um, which is there's Rosamond Pilcher on the back. Um, isn't she just amazing and gorgeous? And she's unfortunately has passed away a couple years ago. So no more books from her. Um, but this is one of my all time favorites. This is, do you want the definition of cozy in my book? Rosamond Pilcher is it. Domestic details. She talks about the food that they eat. She describes the cottages people live in the village that they're walking to. You just get all of these fantastic, cozy details. So I would start with winter solstice now because it's almost winter 
And this is a, a wonderful story set in winter leading up to Christmas um, about a, a woman and her friend who, for, I'm not gonna talk about what, what reasons, they, they decide to go live in a house uh, together to sort of recuperate from a, a tragedy that has happened. And it's just, it's, it's wonderful. They, they sort of build a family with some found stray people who show up at their door. And I, I love this book. Now, a, a heads up on Rosamund Pilcher. She has got um, this book, September, which is this book, The Shell Seekers, and Coming Home, which are her four big kind of chunky novels. All of these are wonderful. Start You could start with any of them, but I, this is one of my, of course, one of my favorites. Um, do not start with her little skinny books, Sleeping Tiger, Voices in Summer, Under Gemini. I love them, but these are her early books. They are pretty much romance. You will think Rosamund Pilcher thinks women are complete nitwits if you start with these books because they're pretty standard romance where the damsel in distress is, is she's young, she needs to, her, her parents are forcing her to marry somebody she doesn't want to marry. Um, they're, they're wonderful, they're cozy, they're, they're good, but they are not a representation of what you're gonna get from these bigger books. So start with one of these bigger, um, chunkier books, one of these four, but I'm going to suggest starting with Winter Solstice because it's one of my favorites. And then lastly, but not leastly, is my beloved Miss Reed. Um, and Miss Reed is even cozier than Rosamund Pilcher. Rosamund Pilcher sometimes tackles some tough subjects in her books. Um, Miss Reed really, really, um, she talks about retiring. She talks about about women who get talked down on from their doctors if they haven't had kids. So she, she sprinkles in a little bit of, of social commentary, but it's very minimal. These are cozy, cozy, cozy. So Miss Reed also had two series, two main series, plus some standalones and the, the main series, the two main series are a Fair Acre, which is Miss Reed as the village school teacher telling the stories in first person. Um, they're very sweet and there's a lot of them. I own a few here. The very first one is Village School. So you could start with this one. I love the Fair Acre series. Um, you could really, you don't have to read these in order though. They're, they're misread generally talking about a situation or about, um, I'm reading one right now called Tyler's Row and it's about a couple that moves into Fair Acre and misread sort of on the periphery and they're talking about this couple. So very, very good. However, my favorite and probably my all time favorite series, especially Cozy, is the Thrush Green series. Now, this is gossip from Thrush Green. I realize I don't have the first one, which is just called Thrush Green. I would start with that one though. Start with Thrush Green because there's not a huge spoilers in any of these, and these are very simple, sweet stories. But with Thrush Green, with this series, you get a little bit more of an introduction to the characters. You meet them, some of them when they're young, they get older. Um, Miss Reed, I think, sometimes forgets how old her characters are because they don't all age appropriately at the same rates, but you just have to suspend your disbelief on that. And start with the first one and read them through. The first one is Thresh Green. I um, own all of these on my Kindle, so this is this is usually one of my lay in bed at night with the covers up and the Kindle backlight on, and I feel like a kid under the flash, under the covers with the flashlight, reading, um, reading in bed when I'm not supposed to. So I like to end my day like that, and this is um, this is a great series for that. So um, this is gossip from Thresh Green. I don't actually have the the original um, or the first in the series, which is 
Thresh Green. So I'm gonna, I'll put this all down in the notes below, but I would start with Thresh Green. Although if you can get your hands on a different, um, and a different one that's not the first one in the series, it's okay. You can start anywhere. Um, but listen, listen to this, because this is the, the definition of, of cozy to me. The chapter is called Afternoon Tea. This is chapter one in Gossip from Thresh Green. In far too many places in England today, the agreeable habit of taking afternoon tea has vanished. Such a shocking waste of time, says one. Much too fattening a meal with all that dreadful starch, says another. Quite unnecessary. If one has had lunch or proposes to eat in the evening, says a third. All very true, no doubt. But what a loss of innocent pleasure these strong-minded people are missing. The very ritual of tea making, warming the pot, making sure the water is just boiling, inhaling the fragrance, the fragrance dream, arranging the tea cozy to fit snugly around the precious container. All the preliminaries lead up to the exquisite pleasure of sipping the brew from thin porcelain and helping oneself to hot buttered scones and strawberry jam a slice of feather light sponge cake, or homemade shortbread. Mm, mic drop. That is, that's the, the cozy. So if you want to read something really cozy, start with Miss Reed Thresh Green series. The first in the series is called Thresh Green. And those are my recommendations for five of my very favorite all women cozy authors. I hope that you enjoyed this and I'll talk to you later. Bye.